This is gonna take Cracker Jack timing, Wang. Total concentration. You ready, Jack? I was born ready. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and it's that time of the week where my X-Men historian, Marvel aficionado, Doc, joins the channel. What's up, buddy? Oh, it's a beautiful Pittsburgh morning, man. All right. You ready to talk about some X-Men? Got a lot of news this week. Absolutely. It, it seemed like a slow week to start with, and then it, it we got some we got some decent information. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, Jonathan Hickman did a, a big interview with uh, Adventures in Poor Taste, and one of the things that he, he pretty much announced is there's going to be a giant size X-Men storm issue. Uh, we don't know who the artist is yet, but Russell Dowderman is doing the cover like he is on all the other giant size X-Men. What are your thoughts on what uh, Jonathan Hickman said about this issue, and are you excited for a, a giant size X-Men starring Storm? I am, because there's been a lot of change in the way that Storm has has acted in the last, you know, basically since House of X and Powers of X. You know, she has, like as he said in the article, he she has kind of become like almost like a high priestess of of mutantdom, and that was it, it, it's kind of this weird take on her kind of goddess nature that she always had, you know, that she had as before the X Men, and it's it's really strange to see, you know, that's kind of gotten forgotten over the years. <clears throat> she still has that regalness to her. They've tried to kind of bring that back out a little bit more with especially like the in my opinion forced and shoehorned romance with black panther that came out of left field and they were married inside six months and but that was 10 years ago it, it's nice to see them bring that you know really exploring that kind of regal side because she hasn't had much of that in the last few years they kind of tried to turn her into like a maya angelou figure you know where she was this a wise, like older black lady, rather than being like the the regal figure from that was essentially royalty in Africa, and it it, it really changed the character, and it was it was confusing. It, it it did, and you know, while I'm not a huge fan of High Priestess Storm, it's better than want to be Maya Angelou Storm. So I do want to uh, make a correction. Russell Dowderman is the artist on the interiors as well. My bad. Oh, okay. Good. I mean, I like his work. It's it's the, the first issue that, you know, we, we've, I know a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the giant sized uh, Emma Frost and Jean Grey, and then it seemed a little wooden, the art, but he's, he's still, his composition is good. It just needs a little bit more oomph to give it some, give it some life. Mm -hmm. And of giant size X-Men, Jean Grey and Emma Frost comes out next week. So hey, maybe he'll surprise us. Yeah. I know that they said that in this they're going to bring up the Wakanda Krakoa kind of conflict between uh, between the two, and you know what? I, I that marriage got annulled ten years ago, and it hasn't been a big deal since. I, I don't know why we're still referencing this. Well, I believe that uh, Storm was part of uh, Black Panther and crew as well, and that was only a few years ago. Oh, that is a good point. Mm -hmm. So it is a somewhat, you know, uh, it has been brought up recently. But moving on from the giant size X-Men storm, we got another uh, piece of information about giant size X-Men uh, Magneto. Uh, artist Ben Oliver is out. Artist Ramon Perez is in uh, to take over. You know, I guess Ben Oliver had something drop on his plate and he didn't have time for it anymore. That's why we had the, the change of uh, giant size X-Men Nightcrawler moving up, Magneto moving back. What are your thoughts on Ramon Perez taking over for Ben Oliver? I think it's a big kind of shift in, in art styles. Ben Oliver is much more realistic and kind of that it has that he has that little bit of like a painted feel to him. Whereas Ramon Perez is a little more cartoony. And uh, now granted, I'm only remembering Ben Oliver from authority human on the inside so maybe his art style has changed in the meantime but you know ramon perez is a little more cartoony and while i really like his style and it would actually i don't know if it i don't know if it necessarily fits for a magneto it'd be it it, it would fit more for honestly i would love him on that storm one or the or the nightcrawler one mm -hmm. but we're getting alan davis on the nightcrawler one 
And but no, I, I I think Ramon Perez is perfectly fine. He's a good good draftsman, good good artist. I like his art. It's just a, it's fairly different from Ben Oliver, in my opinion. All right, so moving on to the next uh, to- uh, topic we have. You know, we know Empire is coming up. It's going to be written by Dan Slott and I believe Al Ewing. It's basically being spun out of the incoming, you know, $10 preview comic. And it's it feels like it's going to be a big event. And we know that there's going to be an X-Men miniseries pitting the zombie uh, mutants against alien invaders. What do you think about this? Because I'm personally not excited. I am terribly mad. I, I just I just don't care. Um, I mean, hey, at least unlike a lot of the other X-Men tie-in miniseries to events that I don't give a damn about, this one they use the actual creative team, you know, with with each it's three issues and two of the X writers are doing, you know, teaming up for each issue. So at least then it's not done by Bob nobody that has never written a comic book before that just they need to shoehorn in and just say hey we need you to write this thing and then he writes the thing that nobody ever gives a damn about and buys because uh, it's nothing but a cash grab this at least they're trying to make the cash grab feel like it's going to connect to uh connect to the the current x-men run i just still don't care well, the cover actually isn't that bad. You got magic with the with a big sword. You got angel in the background, and gosh dang it, who's the name name of the other uh, mutant that died trying to take down the mother mold? Penance. Yeah, penance. At least the cover looks cool. Yeah, I mean, the the cover does look cool. It's just a question of why do I care? I I, I don't <laughs> I, I I I don't see the need for why I care about this event, and I didn't care about buying their ten dollar preview comic. I'm not going to buy their five or six dollar individual issue event books. I'm not going to go out of my way to buy any of the tie in books, unless they can pull a Larry Hama writing Albert and LCD out of the blue again with this and do something like, you know. Roger Stern writing a Captain America tie in from the Cree Scroll War again. I don't care. <laughs> I'm with you, Doc. I could care less about this event. I, I certainly won't be partaking. I'll probably, you know, review the first issue. If it's bad enough, it'll be in, you know, worst of the week with, with Pele. But yeah, I, I could care less. You, you can't throw the X Men in the event and, and expect me to get excited anymore because Marvel is the, you know, they're the event publisher, so who cares? Let's move on to the next topic. Right. You know, also, in that Adventures in Poor Taste interview with Jonathan Hickman, uh, he explained something that I don't think was um, was very noticeable in the comic books. He says, the Xavier we saw in House of X Powers of 10 and up to X-Force number one was the astonishing Xavier who took over Phantom X's body post-resurrection uh, is, is Charles and Charles' body. We've drawn him ever so slightly skinnier. But you know, not for long. Chuck is working out. Uh, Mention this if, if it it per, it didn't really play into the story, and you couldn't tell by what they were doing. Yeah, first of all, it doesn't matter uh, because everybody's already forgotten about how that terrible Charles Soul, astonishing X Men run. It was bad, and nobody cared. But additionally, I, I'm so tired of this. Tell me, but don't show me thing in x-men first of all it doesn't really seem to matter because he's in a different body already they could already resurrect phantom x even if chuck was still in phantom x's body so that doesn't matter and they this this seems like nothing but random trivia at this point that they're shoving at me just to be like oh look we were paying attention really we promise we're not just writing something that whatever is whatever the hell we want and making it fit yeah, it feels like a J.K. Rowling, you know, Dumbledore is gay thing. It's like, if it was that important, you probably should have included it in the story. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. It wasn't important enough to tell me in any of the books to this point. Then it's really not important now. Again, I mean, I, I hate to keep saying this, but Marvel with the X Men, as much as I want to care, you're not making me care. You're 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 pulling things out that I don't care about. <laughs> Make me care. Yeah, I think that ended up 
ended up coming off as more trivial than interesting to me, but wanted to get that out there for the viewers. Yeah. The last piece of news I want to talk about before we get into some of the uh, Dawn of Exiles this week, we got the uh, batch of cable uh, number one uh, variant covers. We don't really like variant covers on the channel, but when you get a great Capullo Marvel Comics cable number one variant cover, we got to talk about it. What do you think about that, Doc? That crazy? Uh, you know what? I loved it because it was OG cable. It was old man cable. It was not tween cable. It was not little whiny bitch cable. It was real cable. And I, I, I don't think Greg Capullo got the memo on that. And he just drew an old G cable, like, like he was drawing X-Force back in 1994. And I love it. <laughs> it, it gives me, mm -hmm. it gives me hope that, Oh, this is what we should be getting right now, <laughs> but we're not. You know, a couple of those ca those covers though were, were not bad. Um, you know, Scotty Young variant. Pfft, nobody cares. the The Greg Capullo one was definitely the best by far. Um, you know, there was there was another one that I, I'm I think it was Nick Bradshaw. I believe um, you're correct. And honestly, I again I I. At this point, I cannot tell any difference between Nick Bradshaw and Art Adams. They are identical artists, and it's kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, the Nick Bradshaw cover was good. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Phil Noto cover. Uh, I'm, I'm not really a fan I, of... I like, I like movie posters, so it kind of works for me. Okay, you know what? I can get behind that. You know, like that, that movie poster style is... I mean, it's cool, but it's... It'd be great. It'd be better for an actual poster than necessarily mm -hmm. a comic cover. I don't even know who did the second one. Um, That's the, boring. Who cares? Yeah, it's bland <laughs> and like no terrible. Death. They didn't do anything with the line art. It's just like a figure in 2D. Yeah. And then the Capullo one was amazing. The Bradshaw one, at least he looked badass for he's once. He's got two big ass guns. Yeah, he's got two big guns falling through a portal shooting at everything and his eyes flashing perfect and then the greg capullo one og big badass cable with a giant rifle about to blow the crap out of something walking like trudging through a swamp mm -hmm. that's cable all right you know so this was a, a good week for for marvel comics as far as uh, don of x we had wolverine number one from ben percy we had uh, a new i believe it's marauders number eight out from Jerry Duggan, and then we also had New Mutants number seven. We're running a little low on time here. Is there one of those comics that you want to talk about, you know, in particular? Uh, Wolverine, easily. It was easily, it was by far the best book of the week. It was, it was a great book. You know, I was a little reluctant to jump on board an eight dollar Wolverine book, but you know, and, and even. Yeah, I think I had a little public tiff with Victor Bogdanovich and he he made it cool. And hell, I think he offered me like a free sketch and a signed comic. And I'm like, you know what, man? Don't worry about it. I, You know, I just making the offer was enough to get me. I'll give you a shot. And <clears throat> I think his art was actually even better than Adam Kubert's. Now I, I love agree. that I I love that opening panel from Kubert. You and I know you and I discussed that yesterday, but Victor's art felt like an old school Wolverine comic. It felt like a you know like you were getting <clears throat> Mark Silvestri or David Finch doing a Wolverine comic again, and it just felt cool. I like the story. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. We're not going to get to continue the Omega Red Vampire stuff until issue four. <clears throat> it seemed like a weird way to 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 open a number one. We got two full stories. I mean, well, we got two intros to stories. I didn't get stuck with a bunch of reprint material in the back to to you know to pad out the the page count. I got all original work and. You know what? Even though it was eight bucks, I thought it was well worth it. It was definitely yeah. more than two comics worth. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I thought Kubert's art, just the way that Wolverine was rendered, looked a little bit more old school because he looked shorter and more stocky. Whereas Bogdanovich's rendering of Wolverine looked a little bit more modern, where he looks taller and stuff. 
Yeah. But I, I thought they were both terrific. And you're right about that opening scene with the snowflakes. And it's just a beautiful setting. And then when you realize that, like, Wolverine's healing up because he's, like, his skeleton and musculature is all showing through and everything. And he's been completely annihilated. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. And Pain honestly... <laughs> yeah, and and you know that kind of jumping in in media res is is cool. It's it's a good way to start a start an X Men story. Now, I wasn't a big fan of the, you know, when Wolverine was on Krakoa parts of it because I, I nah. no, I, I want to see Wolverine being a badass. So, but the rest of it was you know pretty awesome. Now, yeah, the framing the 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 mutants on Krakoa is basically like the. Uh, the scar faces or the uh or like one of the drug cartels from south america of the world now is kind of is kind of interesting i think that's really cool but I, i'm with you i think the vampire story is even better yeah it was okay. gnarly when he stuck the little tap in his neck and they're just like drinking wolverine's blood exactly Ugh. it was really it was you know it was it was hardcore but it wasn't played as horror it, but it also wasn't played as campy it was just like okay this is what they do Mm-hmm. And I thought it was cool when, you know, especially the, um, you know, spoilers, but especially that last bit where you, you know, I don't know if this connects back into that vampire it's gotta, nation. It's got to be an Avengers thing with, with Blade, right? Yeah, yeah, that vampire nation story from from Avengers with Blade and, you know, Dracula and those weird vampires, the one with the dog and the machine gun and the gas mask. Those were cool, but I, I got so lost on what the hell was going on in that book that I, I and, and then the War of the Worlds happened, so I, or War of the Realms, War of the Worlds, um, and I uh, I dropped it, so I have no idea even how that vampire story concluded, or if it did, I don't know, is it still going on? I, I stopped reading Avengers, so I'm I wondering. Know, as soon as the War of the Realms started, I, I dropped Avengers. Yeah, same here. so bad, I couldn't read it anymore, it's, it's awful. Well, yeah. Doc, you know, we're running up, you know, on time right now. I, I also wanted to mention that Kitty Pride once again looks different. <laughs> of course. That, that's my only complaint about that comic book, but I just thought Wolverine one was was the tits. Yeah, and I, I think the problem you're gonna have is I mean, we didn't talk about Marauders, but spoiler alert, she was dead in that one. I'm betting that the Fantastic Four X-Men Kitty and the Wolverine issue kitty are you know after resurrection and most likely so so if you're reading the other books any of the uh any of the the tension that they're trying to create in marauders is already wiped away because we know she gets resurrected yay and she looks better because she doesn't have knuckle tattoos and her nose is good yeah. but uh that's gonna be Going to just about do it for us today for this week in X Men. I just want to say thank you very much, Doc, for for joining us. We had some some definitely some positives about this. That great Capullo cover for Cable looks badass. I think uh, Giant Size X Men Storm is going to be a lot of fun. Great character. I'm glad that they're they're going to tie up uh, some loose ends and and uh, show how the character got to where she is now. Uh, you know, a couple things that that we're not so excited about. You know, nothing's going to make me excited about Empire, but. Yeah, the, them's the breaks, Marvel. <laughs> yeah, you can't sell me on that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm. You're you're not going to sell me on it. Um, I don't care, but I I do like I do like some of the things they're doing. You know, as much as I might sound you know like a negative Nancy here, I I, I like it. I I just don't want to buy Empire. Period. Stop trying to make me buy Empire. Empire is not a thing. You're not going to make it happen. Absolutely. All right. Later, Doc. Later. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.